So lately I've been doing a lot of videos talking about futures and nobody knows the futures market better than Steve here. So let's kind of get some answers from somebody who's just been trading futures for what? About a decade. About a decade, okay. Hey, you know, he might look older, but he's, he's not that old. Let's just talk about futures, all right? What's the basic idea of a futures contract? The idea of buying and selling is just like buying and selling a stock. Right, so, but before I, I get into that, I'll tell you right now, you know, a good friend of mine used to trade the big S&P futures back in the, uh, in the uh, mid 90s. And if there's one, not a regret, but I, I wish I would have traded futures a lot sooner than I did because it really is, is a phenomenal vehicle to trade. But going into what you're saying, you know, when, when anybody who approaches me says, oh my God, a futures contract, you know, I look at them and, and say, you're overthinking it, right? It's no different than trading a stock. If it goes up, you make money. If it goes down and you're long and you own it, it's the same thing. So whether you're trading a stock, an ETF, or a foreign exchange, people get all wigged out a lot of times, but they shouldn't. Don't, don't overthink it, you know? So you're betting on a price that you're buying something at for the future, right? So basically, um, why I've seen an explosion in futures contract is because a lot of people don't have $25,000 that they trade equities, right? So a lot of firms allow a $500 margin per futures contract. So if you have $3,000, $5,000, you can start getting understanding how to trade futures. Basically, a futures contract is just again, like I said, if you're looking at an index like the S&P 500, right? So if you're gonna buy one contract and you buy it at 94 and it goes to 96, you say you made two points or two handles, right? So you're making money based upon the fact that you're buying it low and you're selling it at a higher price. Nobody should overthink trading futures. It's actually, be, if I had to do it all over again, I would have loved to have started trading futures versus trading equities. But again, no regrets. But anybody who's just getting into it should not have any fear of trading futures. I like the, you talked about, you know, the idea that you're going to get in, you can make money, you lose money. But the one thing that I've noticed recently, you know, is trading futures personally, is that I feel more confident in the idea that if I get into it and I'm like, Mentally, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna risk $200. Mm -hmm. And it hits my stop area, I'm gonna basically get filled at that stop area. Well, it, it depends on a fast market. Yeah, it, but I mean, it, I'm yeah. trading with, I'm trading small size, you know, I'm trading five lots. So in a, in a normal market situation, in, in a normal operating market, I'm gonna get filled at that stop area. Where right. and when I'm trading, you know, really volatile stocks, like yeah. in, a, in, in low float stocks, right. I might put a stop there and never get filled. The, the index futures are very, very liquid. Right. Yeah. So look at you. Right. We've known each other a few months now and I started to talk about futures with you and you jump right in. I did a couple go to meetings with you. Yeah. I taught you a little bit here or there. You see the results that you're, you know, making two, three, four hundred dollars a day. Right. Per se. So the point of the matter is you weren't fearful. You were able to, you know, not overthink it. There's nothing to yeah. really overthink. I could say, let's go trade water. Does that, is that going to make you better because you understand what water is? It doesn't make a difference. If it, you buy it and it goes up, you're going to make money if you sell it. And if you buy it and it goes down and you lose money. So you're telling me that the idea of buying low, selling high works just the same with futures? Yeah, I mean, it's basically, you know, what I've done here is built algorithms that give me the ability to see trends and or reversals developing before my eyes and to be able to identify the patterns that come with those trends or reversals. So this is what I do all day long. I'm not just gonna buy something, I wait patiently. And again, it goes back to the five key words that I told you last time. Consistency is the number one, the number one uh, aspect of trading. Then you got discipline, because you gotta be disciplined, money management. So you gotta use your stops. There's no averaging down and then, you know, and then, yeah. then, then you're, you could be wiped out in a day. And then confidence, right? There's confidence here because I built something, I've been trading for 36 years, I wait, which gives me to the fourth word, patience. I'm, I'm patient upon waiting for the patterns to set up. And then obviously the fifth is, I have a passion for this. You know, I love this. I do this all day long. And I love coming into my room and standing here eight hours a day. And I'm, it doesn't even bother me. I think one of the fears that people have with futures as well is that they're going to lose more money than they put into their account. If they're not disciplined. 
they're not disciplined, but I also talking to a couple of brokers, a lot of them, you can set it up so like you can put a daily cap where I don't want to lose more than 500 hours a day. When if, you're, I, if you're starting out, like if you, a safety net where you're like, it's going to liquidate you if you hit that point. Well, but every trade that I do in my live room, yeah. I have stops in place because, you know, I'm not bigger than the market. Yeah. And there have been times I'm not going to ever see or, or stand here and tell you that news came out and where, you know, something affected the market where I got stopped out. Yeah. I can't control the news. I don't have the future before my eyes. But the bottom line is, is that anyone who says that, you know, they're fearful of trading futures, they're overthinking it. Yeah. You know, that's how I look at it. And I try to get people out of that mindset. Thinking about futures clearly as just, like you said, equities in terms of if I'm trading Apple, if I'm trading the E-minis, it's all going side by side. And then understanding the right. risk. Obviously, there's risk with every instrument. There's risk if you go and you get 100 contracts, there's going to be a risk. But when you're first starting out, you know, starting out with one contract, getting, what is it, $12.50 per tick, mm -hmm. you know, having a goal of making $100 a day with mm -hmm. one contract a day, trading in and out and having patience, understanding the risk reward. I think at the end of the day, futures is a much better vehicle for beginners because your focus, you can really just focus on the E-minis. Instead of trying to every day wake up and go, okay, what stock am I going to trade today? Right. And having a million stocks to look at and ha not having an idea. And then you also can be blindsided because you're like, I'm going to buy this stock. And then all of a sudden that stock, you didn't know that the stock also had some kind of weird news coming out and they're mm -hmm. going to they go bankrupt. And you're like, well, you know, with the overall market, there's obviously going to be volatility, but there's also going to be, you know, more consistency but, in. But anybody who starts out trading futures does not, should not never jump in, in my opinion, yeah. with real money. What you do is you open up an account, you set up a simulator, right? You start getting familiar with it, watching it. And once you start getting more comfortable and, you know, you come into my live room, you hear the calls, you start following the, 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 the information, the, the trends, the, the trade ideas that I'm putting out there, um, there's a whole different lingo to it. You know, a handle, like what's a handle? So, you know, for example, so if the S&P futures go from 94 to 95, that's one handle. A lot of, a lot of people don't even know what that means. So yeah. there's a learning curve to it. But nobody who's, uh, anybody who, who's starting out, they should just basically just, you know, open up an account, start with a simulator, you know, start learning, and then go from there. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So exactly, bottom line is when I met you many months ago, and you never even knew what a future was like. And I started telling you, let's do trade futures. And yeah, I did a yeah. couple go to meetings with you, and now you trade futures every day. I, I think, I don't know really, I don't know if I was scared. I definitely wasn't scared. I just think I just didn't know. You know I just that's never did. fair. So I think that was really what it comes down to. I, I had the idea that there obviously was a matrix. There was a, you know, a, a ladder bracket. I just go the same way that if I'm trading Apple, I go on there, I could buy one contract and sell. Bam, bam. But that click, says click. a lot. That says a lot that you know that you admitted that you were unsure you were you know scared because you didn't know yeah so the unknown is always out there right but you take a step back and you want to learn right and that's what i do i teach all day long when i'm slow i'm teaching all day long when there's no patterns no no setups no in the market I, today there was a lull i was bringing up different charts on different instruments explaining people why this happened why did i call this why look at the move that it happened tesla i got a buy signal Right, and then it ran to new highs. It ran almost nine dollars or eight dollars since the time I called the buy signal this uh, this morning. So uh, why did that happen? But it doesn't make a difference if you're trading Tesla, if you're trading Apple, if you're trading Nasdaq futures, oil, gold, euro dollar. It's the same thing. If you buy something, you're waiting for the right setup, the right pattern, and if you're confident based upon the right tools that I'm providing with my 36 years of experience plus the technology, you know, that's what I offer. And, it, and you know, it should not make a difference if you're trading uh, futures. It's, it's a mindset, you know, it's just, just get over it. It's, to me, it's just really just yeah, another yeah. vehicle. No, I get, I get it. I think this is a lot of people when they <coughs> first get into trading, you just kind of think, oh, you overcomplicate things. You know, you think that, you think futures like you got to go and you got to sign a contract. So I'm gonna give you. A, I'm, gonna give you a, I'm gonna give you a great story. Yeah. So when I was growing up, right, I wanted a motorcycle. So everybody's like, oh, start with a Kawasaki, start with a Honda. I'm like, screw that. I'm going for a Harley, 
right? It was like, well, that's a big bike, you know. Yeah. You never rode before. I said, true. I'm going for the. I'm, I'm going for the <laughs> Gusto. That's it, right? And I bought a custom soft tail. So it doesn't make a difference. So you know, the bottom line is, is that you know, learn with a, an instrument that has good movement, and you can learn, and you become a good S and P trader. You can really hold your head up high. I'm excited. Or any futures trader for that. I mean, I'm excited to start buying a hundred contracts at a time. Well, start making thousands of dollars. There it is. <laughs> Learn more about futures. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Tune in. Check out tickertalker.com. See what Steve's doing over there. There's a link down below in the description. And I will talk to you guys later on.